Welcome to the Principles of Pipetting. So what is a pipette? A pipette is an instrument designed to accurately transfer small amounts of liquid, anywhere from fractions of a microliter up to milliliters, and they can be used for a wide variety of applications, including PCR, DNA extractions, and water testing. The first pipettes invented were Pasteur pipettes. These were used by Louis Pasteur during his research in the 18th century. They were used widely and then eventually improved upon. Some of their limitations include that they are fragile, they have limited accuracy, they tend to be time consuming, and can pipette only larger volumes of liquid. The next phase in pipette development are fixed volume pipettes. These are very precise, however, they have limited use. They are still in use today, and they can be used for very specific applications, specifically in GLP labs and any sort of student lab. Then the final evolution in pipettes are adjustable volume pipettes. These uh, were invented by Dr. Warren Gilson in 1969. And the adjustable volume pipettes are very important, not only because they are accurate, but it also allows the technician to aspirate the exact volume that they want, not just what a fixed volume pipette would let them do. Pipetman pipettes are convenient, accurate, fast, and can pipette micro volumes of liquids all the way up to milliliters. So how does it work? There are two main types of pipettes, air displacement and positive displacement, and they function very differently. Air displacement pipettes have an air cushion inside the pipette that is displaced by the piston during aspiration. This means that the volume of the air displaced is equivalent to the volume of the liquid aspirated. Some examples of these standard pipettes are the Pipetman P, Pipetman Neo, and the Pipetman M. Positive displacement pipettes work like a syringe to aspirate and dispense samples. These are more specialized pipettes that are designed to handle problem samples. Some examples include the Microman and the Distroman. After you've picked out your pipette, you want to make sure that you organize your workstation. Adjust your chair or stool so it's the appropriate height. You should be able to rest your elbow comfortably on the surface and still pipette. Always work with your hands below shoulder height and make sure that all necessary objects are within easy reach. So the most used objects should be closest to you and the least used objects should be further away. Fitting a tip. There are two different methods for fitting a tip, one for air displacement pipettes and the other for positive displacement pipettes. For air displacement pipettes, hold the pipette in one hand, then gently press the tip holder into a tip. Next, use a slight twisting motion to seat the tip firmly on the tip holder. Make sure not to hammer a tip onto the tip holder. This can cause a number of problems. It can cause a bend or break of the tip holder. It can also cause a bend of the piston assembly, which will have an impact on your accuracy. And it can also be extremely difficult to eject a tip that's hammered on. For positive displacement pipettes, to fit a tip, you press the plunger button to the second stop to open the clamp assembly. Then fit the clamp onto the piston. While keeping the tip inside the box, depress the push button until you hear a click. If you're assembling your CP tips by hand, hold the tip in your hand after grabbing the piston assembly and push the button again until you feel a click. How to adjust the volume. You can adjust the volume with the push button and the thumb wheel for newer models of pipettes. 
For older versions, volume adjustion, adjustment happens with the thumb wheel. So hold the body of the pipette in one hand, rotate the thumb wheel or push button with the other hand. To reduce parallax errors, either close one eye or turn the pipette horizontal. Mechanical backlash. By definition, this is dimensional dispersion from the counter and adjustment screw in the pipette. So what does this mean? It means that these parts fit together like gears. And because of this, variation in volume setting technique will affect the accuracy. So in order to improve reproducibility, always finish setting the volume clockwise. So to decrease the volume, turn the push button slowly to the desired volume, being careful not to pass it. Then to increase the volume, rotate the thumb wheel one third of a turn above the desired setting, and then slowly turn back to decrease until you reach the desired volume. This way, mechanical backlash always occurs in the same position, improving your reproducibility of results. The pipetting sequence for an air displacement pipette involves five steps. Before the first step, make sure to pre-rinse the tip with the same liquid that is being dispensed. For preparation, hold the instrument in a nearly vertical position. Depress the plunger smoothly to the first stop position. Second step of aspiration, immerse the tip in the liquid allowing the plunger to move up slowly to the rest position. Wait one second so that all the liquid has time to move up into the tip. Then for distribution, place the pipette at an angle anywhere between 10 and 45 degrees. Place it against the inside wall of the vessel and depress the plunger smoothly until the first stop. Then for the purge step, make sure you wait one second then depress the plunger to the second stop position to remove any remaining sample from the tip. Then while removing the pipette tip, make sure to um, let it drag slide along the side wall of the vessel. And then for the final step, simply allow the plunger to move to the rest position, controlling the movement the entire time. The pipetting sequence for positive displacement pipettes involves four steps. For preparation, press the plunger button to the first stop and the piston will move to the appropriate position. Next, for aspiration, immerse the CP in the liquid and release the plunger, letting it move up to the home position. Next, for distribution, Press the plunger button to the first stop and the piston will move down and expel the liquid out of the capillary. And lastly, for ejection, press the plunger button all the way down to the second stop. The capillary and piston are ejected without hand contact. Tip immersion depth is another thing to keep in mind because the immersion depth of your tip can have a significant effect on your results. If the tip is immersed too deeply in a sample, droplets will form on the outside of the tip and be deposited along with the sample. And if a tip is not immersed deeply enough, vortexing can occur and your pipette will not aspirate the selected volume. There are five steps to pipetting. First, make sure you organize your workstation. Then, make sure to fit a tip properly onto the pipette. Next, adjust the volume. Then, aspirate and dispense the sample. And finally, eject the used tip and store the pipette in an upright position. Storing a pipette in the upright position, make sure to protect it from possible